I'm Steve Guterman. And I'm Todd Peenstra. And this is the Appraisal Roadshow. Welcome to the Appraisal Roadshow. I'm Steve Guterman. And I'm Todd Peenstra. We are the public access channel that answers three questions. What is it that you have at your home that you're curious about? What is it worth? And why doesn't the Burger King marry the Dairy Queen? No, we're not going to answer that question. <laughs> but we'll get the first two down. There you go. <laughs> well, we got a nice collection today. Steve, why don't you start it? Okay. Let's start with a watch. What is your name? My name is Randy. Randy. And can you tell me about the watch? Uh, it's a Omega, and it came from my uh, sister-in-law's uh, estate. Okay. And you know anything else about? Uh, it's a mechanical watch. Uh, it runs. It keeps perfect time. Uh, and I believe it's 14 karat gold. Correct. And not correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> First of all. Little do you know it, it was is, a trick question. <laughs> right. In, indeed. It is an Omega watch. Omega is one of the brand names that has a very good resale market and a collectible market. Number two, it works. That's fantastic. Number three, it is 14 karat gold, or certainly the case is 14 karat gold. The band on it is not. The band on it says 1 20th GF, which is gold filled. Okay, so that would have very little value. But while we're on the topic, let's quickly talk about gold period. All right, because we see 14 carat, gold filled, 10 carat, 18 carat. Does anyone understand what that is? It's just the amount of gold that's in it. So if you have so it's like a percentage. Exactly. So if you had 14 karat gold, you would have how much? 14 carats of gold. Not exactly. Let me run it for you. <laughs> that was another trick question. We know that pure gold is 24. 24 carat. Okay. So when we hear 14 carat, we take 14 and divide it by 24, and we get 0.585. So it's 58.5% pure. When we have 18 carat, quick, there's better be some quick mathematicians for this. 18 75%. is 75% pure. When we have 10 carat, it's 41.6%. The other is an alloy to make it hard because 24 carat is way too soft. And we either use copper, tin, zinc, nickel, or silver to give it its strength. Okay. So, now that you have your, your knowledge of gold, we have a 14 karat gold case. We know that there's a movement inside. It's Omega, which is a collectible uh, watch. It is in fantastic shape, which, as Todd has mentioned in previous shows, trumps everything. And we have a band that's not worth any money at all. All right. The gold content would be, if it was just metal, would be very insignificant because it's just a tiny amount. It would probably be in the neighborhood of $50, $60. However, because it's working, because it's Omega, and because of the condition, a watch like this would sell for, typically you, could, you, you would be able to sell this watch for approximately $350. And if you were trying to insure it, we would insure it close to $900. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Very nice. Okay, let's talk, Steve, about this rug that we're standing on, which one of our audience members was kind enough to bring. I hope you don't mind we've been walking on your rug today. I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. so you can tell me how much I can charge you for ruining it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you how much you can charge Steve. <laughs> you You're not going to charge me a damn thing. <laughs> All right, so um, tell us about your rug. Tell us what you know about it. Well, what I do know is that my great-grandparents um, moved to their final home in Whitehall, Michigan in 1935, and that um, this rug was in the living room. And I know this for a fact, because in 1937, my grandparents were standing on it when they were married. And um, then they 
eventually got the rug because they um, got the, the same house. And then when they passed away, I acquired the rug. Okay, so we don't know really, we know when they got it. Right. We don't specifically, to a fact, know where they got it. Like, Correct. they're from Michigan. Yes. So they could have bought it in Michigan or they might have bought, bought it on a trip somewhere. Right, and so my great-grandfather was uh, had his own shipping company, and so they had means. So it was possible they could have gone to Europe and bought it and brought it back. I'm not quite certain. Okay. Um, well, when we look at a rug, the most important thing, Steve, about a rug, there's three important things. What's Color. Good. Color. Okay. Color. Those are the most important things. You look at the color of the rug because as any rug person will tell you, if it's not the right color, it's going to be impossible to sell. So that's what we look at. Now when I look at this rug, I would say to myself as a dealer, I like it more than I don't like it. Red is a good color. Now we can look at this rug. It's red. It's got the floral design on it. Now that wouldn't be my ideal as a rug dealer. Mm -hmm. Rather than the floral design, I'd rather have some more, there's more Persian designs that are more desirable out there. But as a color, I'd rather have red than say peach or yellow or even green, because those colors, they, 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 tend, they tend to not sell real well. Now another thing we look at with this rug, I don't know if the camera is gonna pick this up, but do you guys notice all the little white specks in there? <laughs> All right, now what that is, that's actually a good thing. That tells you that the rug is old because what that is, the way the rug is knotted and put together, uh, the years of walking on it have worn down and you're seeing those knots. But that's actually a good thing. When people see that, it gives the rug its age. It, t it tells the, the rug is a certain age and of a certain quality. So I like the fact that it has that in there. And then the other thing I want to do is paste the rug off. So it looks to me, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have about a, looks like a 10 by, do we think that's seven? One, two, three, four, five, about six. So we have 10 by six. So we have 60 square feet. I'm, I'm gonna guess if you went to sell this rug today, you would get about $15 a square foot wholesale. So we do 15 times 60, that's 600, uh, 720, did I do that right? No, no 900. 900. So $900 wholesale, thank you very much. I didn't have my calculator, I appreciate that. Uh, so $900 wholesale, I'm gonna quadruple that because that's what you do. If you went to a rug dealer, this is a $3,500 to $4,000 rug in a store. So if you're insuring it, be aggressive, insure it for 4,000. If you wanted to sell it, figure you're gonna get somewhere between 500 and $1,000 if you go to sell it probably the upper end of that than the lower end because of the quality, because of the age. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Here we go. What is your name? Jean. Hi. Hi. What'd you bring? That necklace. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the neck? Wait, I see. Here, tell me about it. My twin sister brought it in about 15 years ago from California. Okay. She said it was over 100 years old, mm -hmm. and it's Candy Crystal. Mm -hmm. And Candy Crystal is mined out. Mm -hmm. You can't get none in the mines no more. Steve, the <laughs> most important thing she said in there, she has a twin sister, so be careful. <laughs> There's two of them. That's it. That's all right. I have a twin brother. <laughs> that, that is true. The, um, this is a fashion piece of its day. The um, candy crystal is kind of a catch-all when they mine them the, with all of these little multiple. Um, you can see the little candy colors in there. And it is indeed over 100 years old. Typically, there's lots and lots on the market. Because of the different colors, it actually has a value that was, that's bigger than just a few cents and a few dollars that we typically see. If you were actually going to buy this because it is a candy crystal instead of just the plain that you, that you see every day of your life, this would sell for approximately $150 to $200. If you were trying to sell it, it truly carries a cash value of around $70 to $80. And Steve, if you are going to lick it, what flavor would it be? So, <laughs> would you mind trying and telling us that? I think that, that would be perfectly fine. <laughs> Neat piece. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, that's part and parcel of the whole piece is that it has the, the chains that are actually more valuable almost than the crystal. We have a Bible. Who brought the Bible? Hello. 
So we have here is a Bible, right? Correct? Right. What is your name? Phyllis. Hi, Phyllis. How are you doing? Good. All right, Phyllis, I want you to place your hand on the Bible. <laughs> All right, now who's doing a better... No, keep your hand on the Bible. <laughs> who's doing a better job today, me or Steve? No, don't answer that question. <laughs> okay. Tell us. Tell us. <laughs> tell, tell, us tell us about the Bible. Well, um, the Bible belongs to uh, my mom's friend, and she's 93 years old now, and she's in a nursing home. And I had to clean. I think she's in had that forever. I had to clean her place up when I moved her out to put her in a nursing home. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't have any children or anything, and uh, so I kept some of the stuff that she had had. And so I, I never seen a Bible like that before, so I wanted to find out you know, something I, about it. I, I'm really glad that you brought this because what Steve and I try to do with our show is to deal with things like that people see on an everyday basis. Because we know that there's people out there that are downsizing. Their mom and dad are moving into a nursing home or retirement community. Or you're going from three homes to one home or someone's died in the family and you're settling in a state, or maybe you're just downsizing in general. Your kids are out of the house. You want to get rid of things. These are things that you see every day. It's not like there's some shows out there that they'll show a Monet painting that's worth $30 million, but none of us have that. But this is the things that, see on a, that people see on an everyday basis. I can tell you when I go into a home, I will be willing to bet if I go into 10 homes, eight of them have an old Bible. Now this, this Bible really isn't that old, it's 20th century. It says in there a 20th century edition. So this is probably, I'm going to guess, based on the way it's binded between 1910 and 1950. So it's a 20th century Bible, not that old, although it is in very good condition. So if you were going to go sell this Bible, it probably has a wholesale value of around $50 to $100. It has a retail value in a high-end bookstore of probably 175 to 250. So those are those are your numbers. But I can tell you, people ask me all the time about Bibles. They're just not as rare as you think they are. But thank you very much for bringing it. Money. Who brought the money? Great. I thought it was show me the money. <laughs> All right, I'm looking at the money. We're good. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> needs to show you the money. You got it right there. I got it right in my hand. Okay, what am I talking about? It's all good. About? Don't listen to me. Talk to me. What do you know about it? <laughs> really nothing. It was given to me. Pardon? I really don't know nothing about it because it was given to me. I'll tell you me. what, okay. I wouldn't answer your questions. The last batch of questions, you poor Randy down there, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He got it wrong, so who's going to answer your questions? <laughs> That's you got to okay. be nicer. That's all right. <laughs> we have a group of Morgan silver dollars. Okay, Morgan silver dollars. Um, I see that someone has done an attempt at cleaning these. Ah! <laughs> Don't ever clean. Right. We, Steve, one, did you see the one, way she pointed one, at him? Yeah, yeah. Just one more thing her husband did she right. She could be Mrs. Gooderman. <laughs> Trust me. I live with it. Right. I get the same thing. Right. They are, you don't ever want to clean money. You don't want to clean any of your pieces leave them anything that is antique. The second that we decide to clean them ourselves, they look very pretty, but we've taken away in case it has any numismatic value, we're going to substantially discount it. Okay, now, that said, these are some great pieces. The Morgan dollars, obviously, the, you have Morgan and you have a peace dollar in here. Are you familiar with the difference? No. You can <clears throat> so I. Steve, what are the years of the Morgan dollar, from when to when? The Morgans went through 21. Starting in? Uh, 1878. 78. Okay. And do you know where they were minted first? Denver? It would be Denver my guess. Denver would be, Denver was good. And then which are the ones that are all the value for the Morgans? Ask Randy. I don't know. Yes, you do. <laughs> they are from Carson City. He, Randy did know that. Carson City. That's right. And what are the, what are the dates on the Carson City? Carson City is from 78 to 93, and Carson City was set up as a silver mint. All they minted were silver. So it was 90% silver coins. They were only, that's all they did. Okay, so if you had a Carson City, and on the back it had CC, and they were in beautiful shape, we would be looking at a dollar, a, a $1 that would be worth anywhere between $150 and $1,500. Wow. 
By the way, that's not the case here. <laughs> <laughs> in, 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 in the case here, they are common. They are, they're, they're in great shape. Even if you didn't clean them, you can see the detail on the crown. You can read Liberty. You can see the details of her hair. You can see the locks all the way down. It is in, they're in very good condition. In the condition they're in, even though we decided to, to clean them, they're still worth approximately $28 a piece. The piece dollar, and this is 1922, is worth approximately $20. Now, if it said 21, 1921, instead of 1922, we would use the word $95. So, as you can see, when it comes to coins, there's a few things. Number one, you have, the, you have coins that have a silver value. Number two, they do have a premium as a collector. I'll buy small. Then we notice that there are specific dates and there are specific mints that actually have value over and above what the silver value. Which brings us to, if you have a, um, a collection, you want us to take a look at it and at least have it professionally looked at so that you know what you have. Yeah, so you don't miss any dates. And we should say for those of you at home, as well as you in the audience, that these values are based on today's silver prices. So whenever you happen to be looking at this, whatever month, just be aware of that could change depending on, on what's going on in the market. 100% correct. Okay. Um, who brought this little item right here? How are you? What's your name? My name is Jamie. Hi, Jamie. And Hello. where do you live, Jamie? Are you close to here? Um, I live in Stevensville across the Bay Bridge. Oh, so you're on the Eastern Shore. Yes. Wow, you're probably the only person on the Eastern <laughs> Shore that came here today. Probably. Congratulations. Thank you. So tell me a little bit about this. What do you know about it? Um, I don't know much about it. My husband and I <laughs> go yard sailing or went yard Wait, sailing. Wait, let's just say that wasn't husband. That was that was husband, husband <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, he's going to feel I great think, when he sees this oh. show. <laughs> this gonna be, do we want to give his full name? What's his name? No. <laughs> we can really humiliate well, him on TV. you know, maybe he can laugh about it too. But, yeah, sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> he's not going to laugh. He, <laughs> he's not going to laugh. He, um, went, we went, we, when we went to one of the houses, he went and he found this piece and he paid like five dollars for it. He oh, just so thought it, it like was really nice. Sale. Yes. Okay. Yes, we got it at a yard sale. Okay. And so that's really all you know. Right. You just you liked it, so you well, he mm -hmm. liked it, he so liked he bought it. it. Right. right. This isn't the reason you're not with him anymore. <laughs> no, it okay. definitely isn't. I like, like it. Thing. It's very interesting. Okay. So curious um, about it. Well, that would be an interesting legal question since he bought it. Why does she still have it? <laughs> no, we won't get into that. I'm a divorced guy. You don't have to ask me. Oh, I no. It. No, we, we know. That's correct. He's getting it back, yeah. yes. He to. knows it's here. <laughs> All right, so what we have here, this is called an annular dial clock is the name of the clock. It's basically, so um, um, I would assume, that it doesn't look like there's a light source in there, but you have the glass and you have this piece of metal that comes up that points to the time and so there's the winding mechanism on the side you wind it up and clearly it's just going to rotate around and show you the time on an annular basis like this instead of having a normal face so they call that an annular dial clock they've had it really since the 1800s they've had it for a long time now unfortunately with this one it's not that old and one of the ways that you can tell is because it does have the little winding stem on the side of it and an older clock wouldn't have that an older clock would have a key um, and so that's what you would want to have. You'd want to have a key wound clock, which would give it more value. So what we have here, it's still an unusual clock, but it's just looking at it, it looks to me like middle to late 20th century. So I'm going to say 1940s to present. Okay. Sometime in the mm -hmm. last 40, 50, 60 years, this clock was made. I don't see any marks on it, so I don't know who made it. Do you know if it works? No, I don't think it does. Okay, that's going to hurt it. Because as Steve and I always talk about, we talk about watches and we talk about clocks. What do we say? Has to work. Yeah, because mm -hmm. well, how much do you think it would cost, Steve, if I had to go out, take it to your clock guy, and say, fix that for me? What do you think? $100, $150? At least. At, yeah, least, at least overhaul, sure, the inside. Yeah, and I don't think it's worth $150. You I know, if I saw that in the store working, at best, $150. Yeah, $150. So, so what we have here, you see where I'm going with that, is that if you invested $150 to get it fixed, it might maybe be worth $150 that you put into it. So what I would say is I would say, if you like the piece, do it. If it's a piece that you don't particularly like, I wouldn't put any money into it because there's no reason to. You're not going to get the money back out of it. It doesn't warrant it. Right. Um, does that make sense? Yes. 
Okay, it does, does that answer your question? It does, thank where you. Where did you guys go, where did, where did you, you pick it up in a flea market? Um, at a yard sale in Severna Park. Oh, interesting, what was your favorite restaurant? In. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea Just, where he's going with this. What was it? What do you, what uh, my favorite your, restaurant? Yeah. What did you, where in did you guys Severna like to Park, go? we yeah. uh, Cafe Mezzanotti. Cafe Mezzanotti. I was noticing that. It <laughs> says property of Cafe Mezzanotti. <laughs> <laughs> I figured. Oh, well, do we have security? He must please? have put that in his so, jacket pocket. Yeah, <laughs> All right, now you know he's the was been, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so who brought this? Who brought this teacup? What can you tell me about? First off, the first thing I should ask you is, is this the only one of, or you, is this part of a set? I have 12. That's 12 cups, the pot and a couple other pieces, which I don't remember what they are offhand. Do the, the and cups have saucer? It's stolen, is that okay? What's that? It's stolen, is that okay? It's, you stole it? <laughs> I'm teasing, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. We, we have the only public <laughs> access channel that, we have, a, we have an audience full of, of con men and uh, thieves here. Um, as long as I don't get arrested, it's okay if you guys want to. So we have cups, we have saucers for the cups, we have a teapot, yes, and we have some plates. Yes, and a creamer maybe. So we have a teapot, a creamer, a sugar, mm -hmm. and how many plates, do you remember? I believe it's 12. Okay, the reason I ask that is that we're trying to, what I'm trying to get at is, is it a complete set? And apparently it is. So we have 12 cups, 12 saucers, uh, 12 plates, a teapot, a creamer, and a sugar. So it sounds to me like it's a dessert set. Um, that, I'm uh, guessing that the plates are probably about maybe six to eight inches. They're not dinner plate size. They're more like... They're mm -hmm. smaller. They're yeah. smaller, mm -hmm. right. So it's a dessert yes. set. Now, so that's the first thing. We have a complete set. So, sir, you can rest easy. She stole something that's worth some money. Okay? <laughs> that's the first thing. Then we look at it. It has on here, it has a blue mark. It says Bavaria, Germany. Now, for those of you at home and those of you in the audience, a quick thing to help you. When you look at a piece of porcelain, if it has the country of origin on it, Germany or made in Germany, United States, made in the United States, that tells us it was made after 1890. It tells us it was modern. So something that was made before 1890 wouldn't have a country of origin on it. So the fact that it says Germany on it in Bavaria tells me that this was made between 1890 and about 1950. And looking at it, I'm going to guess the 30s, 40s, 50s. It just feels a little bit later than that to me when I look at the the sheen on it, the patina, the pattern, the mark, everything put together. All right, so there's a good news, bad news here, folks. The good news is we have a complete set. The bad news is porcelain right now isn't selling really well because what's going to drive the value of something is demand. And you'll see me say this in every episode, it's demand. What is the demand? What are people buying today? And they're not buying tea sets. They're not buying dessert sets. I can guarantee you if you asked, and you're young, if you asked, a hundred girls your age, you know, in the 20 to 40 range, would they buy something like this? They wouldn't. So a set like this sells in a store today, the whole set, for about $200, $250 retail. If you wanted to sell it, you could probably sell the whole kit and caboodle for about $90 to $100. Thank you very much. Thank you. Who brought these? Hello, how are you? Good, thanks. What is your name? Lee. Lee, and um... Mm -hmm. Tell me about these. Where did you get these? What do you know about them? Well, I got them at an auction. Please, don't mind. Hold the microphone there. Thank you. I got those at an auction. I go to auctions. I used to go to auctions some time ago. And How long ago are we talking about? Uh, about maybe between 20 or 30 years ago. Oh, okay. So we're talking a while ago. Okay. Yeah. So you bought these at a local auction here in, in the... Uh, in Annapolis. Washington area? Mm -hmm. In Annapolis. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we have when we look at these, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over because what did we just talk about, sir? We talked about country of origin, didn't we? So we're going to look under this and it says, Coal Port made in England. So ma'am, is this made before or after 1890? After. That's exactly right. And it's Joan, right? Joan? Jean. Jean. Joan, Jean. What's the difference? No, it's Jean. Okay. <laughs> So, so what we have here is we have coal port made in England, so we know it was made after 1890. Now, because it says made in, I know it's well after 1890, so these probably date, again, middle 20th century, 1940, 1950, 1960. And it says a limited edition, so these were a limited edition by the coal port company, and they're in excellent shape. They've got the original stoppers, 
and it's a pair of two, so it's a pair. So all of those are good things. What did I just talk about? I just talked about demand. I said, what are people buying? Well, they're not buying this, unfortunately. This is that, what this is, this is to take advantage of, if you guys remember in the 80s and the 90s, what was really popular was blue and white Chinese export. That's what this is trying to look like, right? Is that Chinese export, that blue and white look that was so popular in the 80s and the 90s. Well, if you asked, you know, women 20 to 40, are they going to decorate with this? They're, they're not going to, they're going to they're say they would no more have this than have a hole in their head. They just don't want it. You know, they're not buying things like this. And I say that not to make fun of younger women, but just to say that's what drives the market. So if I saw these in a store, if I saw these in an antique store, and they're not truly antique because as we ascertained, they're only about 50 years old, these would sell probably for, I'm going to say, somewhere around $100 to $200 for the pair. So I'm going to say about $150, $175 is your retail. Wholesale, if you said, Todd, I want to sell these. I don't want them anymore. I want to sell them. You're not going to get much. I would tell you to hold on to them. I think it's a bad market to sell them. I would expect to see these sell at auction or in a consignment store. You could probably get, you're probably going to net out not more than $100. So I'm sorry to give you the bad news. Does that help you out? Oh, yeah. I only paid $25 for them. Well, but that was 30 years ago you yeah. paid $25 True. for them. So True. $25 30 years ago is about $7,500, $100 today. Okay. Wow. Uh, Right, we have a radio here. Who brought this radio? What's your name, sir? Uh, Bob. Bob, what can you tell us about this radio? Well, this was our home entertainment center back in the 40s when I was growing up, and uh, that's before television started. Right, the and it's the old, like, it's the old tubes in the yes, back. Yes, and it still runs, still works fine. So it's like, looking at it, it looks like 1940s. Is that yes. going to be about yes. right? About um, 41 or 42. Okay, and does it work? Yes. That's real important, ladies and gentlemen, because I see a lot of these old radios, and believe me, they're cool. I mean, Steve, isn't that cool? Way cool. Yeah. Like, a lot of people look at this, and this is actually a look because it's, it's sort of got that Art Deco feel to it. It's vintage. It's an American radio. A lot of people like decorating with these, but if it doesn't work, it takes up a lot of room. It just ends up being like a, like a, like a living sculpture. You can't do anything with it. You can't store things in it. But this one works. How cool is that? So now you could actually put that in your living room and, and listen to the Redskins game on TV. Uh, no, we wouldn't want to do that. Hey, uh, that was the last time they were good. <laughs> <laughs> so the fact that it works to me is real significant. So if I saw this in a vintage store in working condition, I would expect to see this sell five to $750. So I'll be aggressive. I'll say I would I would insure that at about seven fifty. If I was going to sell that on today's market, I think you could get two to three to four hundred dollars. Very nicely done. Thank you, sir. Thank you for bringing thank it. Mm -hmm. Well, Todd, it's that time. Once again, thank you, thank you for coming to the Appraisal Road Show. If you would like to get any more information about us or about what we do or some strategies. Go to appraisalroadshow.com. We are the show. We are the website that helps you figure out what you have, what it's worth, and where to go with it, what to do with it. We'll help you out. Thank you Thank very you. much. <laughs>